welcome back in easy to see in our last class we already learned about sum of product and product of some form of logical function in digital world and we also learned canonical sop and canonical pos in today's class we will learn as i promised in my last class that if a logical function is given in non canonical form then how to transform that non canonical form to its equivalent canonical form be it sop or pos so let's get started first we will see the canonical sum of product that we already aware of so sop means sum of product is what it is the logical sum of two or more logical product terms so logical sum means or operation and logical product means and operation now canonical sum of product that also we have learned that the canonical sum of product is the logical sum of all the mean terms derived from the rows of a truth table for which the value of the function is 1 this is an example of canonical sum of product where y is the logical function and in the first format we can see that this logical function has three variables a b and c and in each main term we have all those variables so this is a canonical form and each variable in each main term is either in original form or in complemented form now in the second format of that logical function what we can see is it is represented by its corresponding mean term numbers and since this is a sum of product that's why here we have the summation sign and in the third format it is the compact form where we only represent by its corresponding decimal number so we have already seen these uh, formats in our last class and today what we will do if suppose a logical function is given in non-canonical form then we will transform to its equivalent canonical form and for doing that we need to follow some steps or some instructions so we will be seeing them step by step so the first step tells that examine each term in the given logic function and retain the term if it is a main term now all these steps will be more clear if we learn by examples so this is an example where we can see y is a logical function then it has a plus b complement c these two terms now what we can see here that this logical function has three variables a b and c and in the first step what we will do we will examine all the terms one by one and we'll see whether each term is a main term or not if it is a main term then we will retain that term so first in this logical function we will examine the first term which is only a it doesn't have b and c either original in original form or in complemented form so that means the first term is not a main term then we will move on to the second term and second term what it has is has b bar or b complement and c and and operation definitely between them since we are talking about sum of product but still here we have b and c but we don't have a so the second term is also not a main term so now we have to follow our second step second step says that if it is a main term then it's okay we will retain that term otherwise if it is not a main term then we will check for missing variables in each product means in each term in that logical function which is not a mean term so here in this logical function what we can see is in the first term we have the missing variables b and c and in the second term we have this missing variable a now we will follow the next step next step says that multiply the product by x plus x complement for each missing term x if it is not a mean term so in this example in the first term as we have already evaluated that the missing variables are b and c so what we will do is we will first multiply a by b plus b bar as we have seen in the third step for the second term the missing variable is a so we will multiply that by a plus a complement so what we will get from this multiplication or and operation so it will be a b then the next term will be a b bar and then we will have a b bar c i have rearranged the variables in alphabetical order and then the fourth term will be a bar then b bar and c now if we look at the third term and fourth term these two terms already have a b c all these variables so these two are main terms but what about the first and second term they are still missing c 
so what we will do next again we will iterate the third step for first and second term and then we will retain last two terms or third and fourth term because they are already mean terms so now what we will do again we will perform the and operation so here it will be a b c and then we it will be a b c bar next we will follow the next step which is supposed to be the last step so the last step says that multiply all the products that we have already done and omit the redundant terms so now we will see that if there is any redundant term or not in that logical function and if it is there then we will omit them so for a b c it has only one occurrence so there is no redundancy a b c bar again there is only one occurrence so there is no redundancy a b bar c a b bar c has two occurrences so we will omit one occurrence and then a b bar c bar and here it's a bar b bar c so these two are different so both of them have only single occurrence that means in the final expression of that logical function we will have altogether five main terms so in this logical function why we have five main terms and this is a canonical form now this is one of the formats and if we want to represent by some other format or by the format that we have seen then that can also be done now if we rearrange all these main terms as per their occurrence in the truth table then it will be now if we want to represent again this logical function by the third format which is the compact format then we know that that is done by the sigma symbol then at the bottom of that we write the small m which represents mean term and then within bracket we write their corresponding decimal numbers now we will evaluate another example where y is again a logical function and it is represented by two terms where in the first term we have a b and in the second term we have b complement c d so altogether what we can see here is in that logical function it is represented by basically four variables a b c d but none of the terms has all the variables that means both the terms they are not actually the mean terms so what we will do since they are not mean terms so we will not retain them and in the next step what we will do we will multiply by the missing terms and the format we know in the first term the missing variables are c and d and in the second term missing variables is only a so in the first term we will first multiply by the variable c that means c plus c complement and then for the second term we will multiply by the only missing variable which is a so this time it will be a plus a complement and why we are multiplying by this type of term where one term has its original form and the other term has its complemented form because a b c d especially if we talk about this logical function then all the variables are basically boolean variables and for any boolean variable we know that boolean variable and its complemented form if we add them then that value is one that we have already learned in the class where i have talked about the basic laws of boolean algebra so that is also applicable for this variable and that was also applicable for the previous exam so now what we will do is we will complete these multiplications now if we assess the third and fourth term we can see that these two terms already have all the variables a b c d either in the original form or complemented form that means these two terms are mean terms so we will retain them and then the same logic we will apply again on the first and second term because they are missing the fourth variable d now again we will complete this multiplications now in the last step we will see if there is any redundancy of the terms but here we can see that all the six main terms are different from each other there is no redundancy so we will keep all of them so this is one of the formats by which we have represented this logical function if we want we can represent by the second and third format also that we have done for the first example now this time it has four variables so total combinations will be 16 0 to 15 next we will see the canonical product of sum now product of sum or pos we know this is logical product of two or more logical sum terms this is an and operation of two or more or operation now we already know that canonical product of sum is the logical product of all the max terms this time derived from the rows of a truth table for which the value of the function is zero so instead of one this time it is zero for product of sum so this is an example of a logical function which is given in product of sum that format in the first format we already have 
all the logical variables for that logical function and in each max term each variable is either in original form or in complemented form now in the second format where we are representing by the max term number not by its uh, actual value of that variable and in the third format we are representing by its corresponding decimal number only now we will see if a logical function is represented by product of sum and if it is in non-canonical form then how we can transform to its corresponding canonical form so first step what it says again it is same as the previous one so we have to examine each term in the given logical function and if it is a max term then we have to retain that term in that logical function now if it is a not a max term then we will see that which variable is missing in that term and if there is any missing variable then what we will do we will add x x complement means here we have and operation between that missing variable x and its complemented value and we will add this term to that term which is not a max term in that logical function so it will be more clear when we will solve examples so this is our first example that we will solve apparently it may look like that it has sum of product that format because this example we have already solved for sum of product but this time we can represent this as product of sum and for that we have to apply the distributive law of boolean algebra that we have already learned in one of our earlier classes so if we apply that distributive law then it will be a plus b bar this is one term and then multiplied by a plus c so now this has a format product of sum but still in this format we have two terms where we can see that altogether in that logical function we have three variables a b and c but in each max term we have one variable missing in the first max term we have c variable missing and in the second max term we have b variable missing so what we will do in the first term we will add this term c multiplied by c complement and why c multiplied by c complement because a b c all of them are boolean variables for and for any boolean variable we know that it will be x multiplied by x bar that gives us zero and if we add zero with this term so value wise there it will not create any difference but we can include the missing variable so that will be also applicable for the second term where we have a and c but we don't have b so what we will do we will add this term b multiplied by b complement and now again we will apply the distributive law so here we already have a and plus b bar and c multiplied by means and operation with c complement so it will be plus c and then we will have another term or factor where we do we it will have a plus b bar and then plus c bar so these two terms we are basically getting from the first term in the second line and from the second term we will be getting again two terms so again we will be applying distributive law and that will give us a plus c plus b and then a plus c plus b complement so now if we evaluate all these four terms then we can see that in each term we have all the variables either in the original form or in the complemented form and this is a canonical form or canonical product of sum now next what we will do we will follow the next step which is supposed to be the last step so what it is we will expand the expression by using distributive law that we have already applied and then we will omit the redundant terms the way we did for canonical sum of product so if there is any redundancy that we have to handle then we have to omit the redundant term so first max term is a plus b bar plus c and we have in the fourth max term if we see then it has again a plus b bar plus c so these two basically are redundant so we will take only one occurrence and we will ignore the other one and then the second max term a plus b bar plus c bar and the third max term is a plus b plus c so these two are different that means in this logical function we have three different max terms so here i have considered only three max terms i have already rearranged the variables within each max term and i have already arranged the max term as per their occurrence in the truth table 
so you can go back to the class where i have explained about the max term and product of sum now this is one format and if we want to represent by their max term number so what we can do is a plus b plus c is basically the first max term so it will be written or represented by m0 then a plus b bar plus c this is basically the third max term so it will be m2 and a plus b bar plus c bar it will be basically the fourth max term so it will be represented by m3 and between all these max terms we will have and operation and now if we want to represent by its compact form then we will use the pi symbol and then within bracket we will represent by their corresponding decimal number so it will be 0 comma 2 comma 3 so one interesting point is when the same function we represented by its mean term then the mean term numbers were 1 4 5 6 7 so what are the missing numbers 0 2 and 3 and again when we represented the same logical function by its max terms then those 0 2 3 came so basically we are representing by those numbers only 0 2 and 3 now we will simplify another example so in this logical function what we can see is we have two terms now we have to evaluate whether those two terms are max terms or not in this logical function it is basically represented by four variables and none of the terms is having all the four variables together in the first term we have c and d these two variables missing and in the second term we have a variable missing so what we will do next we will not return them as they are not max terms rather in the first term we will add c and c complement this term and in the second term we will add d plus c plus b complement so here we will add this a and a complement because a is missing here now we will apply the distributive loss now third and fourth term as we can see they are already having all the four variables so third and fourth are max terms but still first and second terms are not yet max terms so what we will do we will again follow the third step so this time d variable is missing so we will multiply by d d complement and third and fourth terms as they are max terms so i have retained them now in this logical function it has six max terms in total and all the max terms are different from each other so there is no redundancy and we don't have to omit any one of them and if you want to represent this logical function by its second format or third format you can easily do that you already know the rule i hope this class was meaningful for you see you in the next class thank you